I'm going to be showing you how to set up a zero file from scratch. And this is all a part of my series I'm doing where I'm starting a business from scratch and going through all the fundamentals of how you actually get the business off the ground all the way through to running on a daily basis. So sit back and enjoy as I show you how to set up a zero file. Now we're gonna go through the process of setting up a zero file. Now mine may look a little bit different to yours because I am using the partner account, but in general, the process should be pretty similar. So all I've done so far is enter the organization name and it will give you the guide here on how to go through the process of actually setting up the file. So it's important you get this right because if you don't get this right, then it can cause a whole range of other issues as we go along. So then we come here to our organization details. So our display name would normally be your business name or whatever you want to come up in the zero search bar when we look up here. The legal name should be whatever the actual entity name is. So in my case, I'm just going to be using my name as I'm going to be operating here when I pick the organization type as a sole trader. This is where you would enter your ABN if you've got one. So if you're running this as a business, you should put your ABN in there. I'm gonna skip that step for now. If you want to put your addresses, this is quite important if you are using Xero to do any kind of invoicing. So these are the invoicing, this is the official document addresses. You can edit these later on, but important, if you want to go and fill out social media links, etc., they're not vital to what we want to do. And the whole point of me making this video is showing you the most simple steps that you need to get this started. So then we are going to look at our financial year end. Now, so if you're in Australia here, it's likely going to be 30th of June. And then we're going through activity statement settings. So if you're registered for GST, you need to know is it on a cash basis or on a cruise basis? Or in this case, I'm actually not registered for GST, so I'll be selecting none. But you can go through and put your tax file number in, put your GST calculation in, if you've got pay as you go, pay as you go income tax withholding, you know, fringe benefits, fuel tax, like fill out these correctly based on your current situation. So in my situation, we're gonna go none. We're gonna select our time zone. So I am plus 9.30 here in Adelaide. And that's that one sorted. So the key one of that is getting the GST right. Now I'm not going to be setting up invoices, but if you were setting up invoices, you can do that in the next step. I'm going to skip that because I'm not setting up invoicing for this account. Now we're at the manage users stage. So this is where you could invite in your accountant, for instance, or if you've got a bookkeeper, or maybe you've got an office staff member that will be doing some of this for you. So this is this stage. For me, I'm going to be the only person working this file, so I will be skipping that step. Now we get into foreign currency exchanges. A lot of people don't use this. Again, if you're using foreign currencies, you can add them in here. But again, what I'm trying to do is give you an example of what a real small business is using, and a lot of people aren't using that unless they're dealing a lot in foreign currencies. Now, this is the key step when setting up a file is your chart of accounts. So Xero do provide a default chart of accounts. I personally don't like it. I actually like another Xero template that I found a few years ago. I can provide that to people if they want. So I'm going to import from a file. Now you could import from Myob or Banklink if you're using one of those previous systems and you're coming across. But so for me, I'm actually going to import from Xero and it sounds a bit odd, but they do have another file. So I will browse that file here and we will import that file. And once that imports, that's gonna bring us across some stats here. So we've got 85 accounts imported, three additional system accounts. We've got 74 accounts that could not import it due to errors. And a lot of these errors are actually gonna be because of GST. So because I've selected no GST on this account, it's not gonna bring through all the accounts that had a GST either on income or expenses. So it is gonna mess up the chart of accounts. But if you had a entity that was registered for GST, it would become really easy. And we confirm that, and that will bring in all of those system accounts. And these ones are already built with all the report coding, etc., based on how Xero likes their files set up. So I find them really good. Okay, so we've now imported that. We've got this list. Like I said, it's removed all the ones that had GST account codes. We can now go through here and start adding codes if we want. So we may want to re-add a sales code because of that. So we're going to look at the drop-down box. We're going to find the revenue or the sales code. We can put any code number we want in here. I like to try and keep them in some kind of order, but it doesn't matter too much. Put the name, and obviously in this situation, because we're not registered, we can just put pass excluded. But if you were registered, you can pick one of those options and we can save that. We can go back to this later, which I'll show you, but that is you could add in all your chart of account codes right here. And once we go through, you know, if we're happy with all of them, then it's just a simple matter of going down here and we go to the next. Now we haven't added a bank account. I don't normally do that at this step. I don't actually normally do much in the chart of accounts here because I just want to get into the file. We can continue anyway, and we're going to go to 
the conversion date. So the conversion date is when are you going to be starting to use zero? So normally this will be at the start of a financial year. So say we we're going to start from July, 2022, then we would do that. And then what it's gonna do on the next screen, we're going to be able to enter our balances as at 30th of June. So normally, again, I'd recommend starting at the start of financial year because then you can get your set of financials from your accountant and enter all of those in if you're existing business. If you're a new business, it doesn't really matter what date you pick because you're going to be starting from today pretty much. But if you've got any existing transactions then make sure that you put it back to pretty much when the business started or when you've got your last full set of accounts. So if we had a full set of accounts at 30th of June, we can go show all accounts and we can start to enter that profit and loss in and the balance sheet. So it's a great way to get all of your existing data in. We can go back and enter more comparatives if you want, but these are the important ones, which is the starting the conversion balances. So in this case, we don't have any of those to do, but we go next and this will pretty much finish off the setup. With the setup, the basic setup is there. Like I said, I like to breeze through those steps, get the basics right, but now we can go in further and do more things once we're now into this stage. So you can see we're on our dashboard. If you haven't used Zero before, they always give you nice pop-ups here where you can watch videos about you know, learning the basic features. And one thing you'll quickly notice in the file is how well it's set out and how basic it is. You know, we've got adding your bank accounts, we've got cash in and cash out, you know, talking about invoices and it's in terms that make sense to business owners. So we've got invoice and billing and then it will say, you know, money you owe, money owed to you in terms that make sense to business owners. So now we've done that, one of the key things I do want to do is set up my bank account. So I want to add an account in here and this is so my bank feeds will start coming in. So you want to get this done ASAP because the sooner you can get this in, the sooner you can start reconciling. And then you don't have the issue of having a gap between when your bank account actually started and when the feed starts in zero. That's a whole nother topic of how you get that fixed up. But in this case, we're going to, I've got a NAB bank account that I want to add. And again, this can be called what it is. I'm just going to call it the business account. And we select what type of account it is. So in this case, it's going to be an everyday account. And if you, I will blur this part out, but I'm going to enter the BSB and the account number here. So now I've entered those in, I can hit continue and it will give me the option now where I can get the live bank feeds from my bank. So I can hit get bank feeds and this will bring me talking about how the bank feeds work. Make sure you understand how they work and you know, you're happy with the security, etc. I've never had any issues, but you can understand how that works and we can apply for our feed. So in here, we can go to here and it will take us to our internet banking screen where we can go in and apply for the bank feed. So obviously I will cut this part out here, but I'm going to do that now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done that. If you are with a different bank, the process may be different. But in general, you can see the get feeds has now gone away. So when I go back to my dashboard, which sometimes I do find zero can be a little bit glitchy at the start of just wanting to go back to this setup guide. But if you hit that, it should take you back to the dashboard and there will be more options up here. Sometimes I do find it can take a bit of time before the actual options show up. So what I will do is pause the video again until they're back and then I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so now you will see that I've got a lot more options up here at the top. So now I can go ahead and actually set up some further things for the business. And most of the things you're gonna to wanna to be setting up is your chart of accounts. But what I wanna show you at the start, you could have done this all at the start, but now you can see going into your chart of accounts, we can do this from here. And like I said, I wanna try and keep the codes in order, but that isn't vital. So I've now got a sales code. Now I wanna add a stock purchases code. So again, I can see my opening stocks here and my closing stocks there. So anywhere between 320 and 380, obviously without using a code that already exists. So I know this one is a direct cost and I'm gonna go 3, 330 and I'm gonna put it as purchases. And then it comes up with an error saying that already exists. So if I change to 335, it'll allow me to do it. Again, because I'm not registered for GST, it's gonna go as Bass excluded. And that's all there is to adding, adding account codes. So you can keep adding as many account codes as you want. So I might add, you know, a packaging code. So I can again, go here when I don't have many codes, this is expense code 455 and I'll go packaging. And what you would obviously do if you've got an existing business would be to add all of your codes that you have from your previous financials because you need them in there before you can put those comparison details. But it can be a good way for you to learn is, hey, what do I need to categorize things into? If you're not sure, chat to your accountant, but in general, you know, start adding things that you think you may need for the business. So obviously you'd go through that. If you do have any other assets or liabilities, you can add them in here, you know, existing loans or other kind of investments, etc. So in this case, I'm actually gonna add something 
to be able to track my cash expenses or expenses paid from personal accounts that aren't going to go through zero. Now, I do avoid doing this as much as possible, but I know in this case for this reselling business I'm setting up, I have actually gone and done that because my waiting for the bank account to set up and I'm waiting for a card to arrive. So I did actually go and purchase something the other day. So I'm going to go through that process here. Then I'm going to go through a little bit of custom reporting and that will finish the video off. So the way I'm actually going to set up the cash expenses, and there are multiple ways to do this, but I find this the easiest. I'm actually going to add it as a bank account. So what I'll be doing is adding a cash expenses bank account. So when I search cash expenses, obviously there's no bank called that. So I can manually add that. I'm just going to call it cash expenses. I'm going to call the account name cash expenses. And this is going to be for anything that I pay outside of cash. You could use this as a petty account, a petty cash account, etc. So I don't need to put an account code in. The account type I'm just going to put as other. I believe you have to put zeros in the BSB and just put a zero in there and I save that. And this will allow me to utilize this on my dashboard because it will show up here as the cash expenses account. So I can now add transactions into this. So the way I'm going to do this is going to go to the three dots and I'm going to do a new spend money because I've got my receipt here where I purchased something and I'm going to add that in. So my two is going to be who I paid this to. So this was purchased at Savers and the date on my receipt was the 2nd of December 2022. You can put a reference number here if you've got a bill, etc. In this case, I don't, so I'm not going to put that. And I'm going to put the total of the receipt. And the description can be whatever you want. You know, you don't have to have a description. I'm just going to put stock purchases because, you know, for the example of this video. And the quantity, again, depending on what you're doing, most cases, most people will probably just use one. It was 13 and I can now search for that code I created before, which was purchases. And I can save that transaction and it will now add that transaction. Now, you can now manually reconcile this if you want. You don't necessarily have to reconcile it. I'd chat to your account about how they want you to set this up. But I just wanted to show you how I can bring in an expense there. And now the fun part is that we can now actually run a profit and loss report. We've got an expense. Now we haven't adjusted for stock or anything like that and I'm going to be covering stock in way more in depth in future videos but I just want to show you how it all looks now that we've got our chart of accounts, we've got our bank feed set up and we've got an expense. So we can straight away see we can run a report for this month, we can run it for this financial year, this quarter, however we want to set it up but we can now see that our expense is in there and we have a loss at this stage because of the way it's been entered but we can now customize these reports and this is the great thing about accounting software is that we can now do this at the click of a button to change, oh, we just want to look at this quarter or we want to look at this month. We want to compare it. There's way more in-depth reporting and I'm going to go through some videos on how we can do that in, f in a future video. But that's the fun thing with using software compared to something like Excel or doing it by paper is the reporting side of things. So when we return to our dashboard, we will now see we've got our two bank accounts, our bank account and our cash expenses bank account. We can edit these if we want to change how they're, how they're set up. We can go to the edit the dashboard. We can drag the, the bank account up here if we would like. But that's the basics of it. So in a future video, I'm going to be covering reporting and the fun thing of bank reconciliation. So stay tuned for that one. Hopefully in a couple of weeks time, once I have some transactions flowing through this business. And if you're interested in this little eBay side business I'm starting up, you can go and check out this upcoming video where I went through why I'm doing this. Other than that, I appreciate you sticking around and I'll talk to you again on the next video.